Hey, this is Presh Tollwalker. This puzzle caught my attention because it has an interesting story. The puzzle was published in the magazine Popular Science, and it then went unsolved for 37 years until the magazine republished the problem in 1986 and asked readers to submit answers. They received over 2,000 correct replies. So while this problem isn't in the category of unsolved math problems or extremely difficult math problems, it is just an interesting problem that was shared in the common media. So here is how the puzzle goes. You have a quadrilateral ABCD. Angle C is a 90 degree right angle and CB is equal to CD is equal to 10 miles. Imagine there's a car starting at the point A. We are going to consider three paths it can take to get to C. One path will be going directly A to C. Another path will be A to B to C, and a third path will be A to D to C. You are given the times of these travels. If the car goes from A to C, the car will take exactly 30 minutes. Of course, the car is going at a constant speed for the entire trip in all of these cases. If the car takes the path going from A to B to C, the car will take an additional five minutes. So ABC will take 35 minutes. Finally, the car could go A to D to C, and this will take an additional five minutes. So A to D to C is equal to 40 minutes. So with this given information, the question is, can you solve for the car's speed in miles per hour. I thank Kirby Stevens for the suggestion. Pause the video if you'd like to give this problem a try. And when you're ready, keep watching to learn how to solve this problem. So how can we solve this problem? We will get started by solving for the remaining distances based on the given information we have. So we need to calculate the length of AC, the length of AB, and the length of AD. Let's start with the length of AC. Suppose S is the speed of the car in miles per minute. We have the formula that distance is equal to the speed multiplied by time. We want to calculate the distance AC. We know the speed is equal to S, and we know the time to go from A to C is equal to 30 minutes. Substituting into the formula, we get AC is equal to S multiplied by 30, which means that AC is equal to 30S. Now let's figure out the length of AB in the same fashion. But we don't directly know the time it takes to go from A to B. What we do know is that it takes 35 minutes to go from A to B to C. So let's take ABC as the distance. So we have ABC is equal to S multiplied by 35. But then we can indirectly calculate AB. AB is equal to ABC minus BC, and BC is equal to 10. So AB is equal to 35S minus 10. So we can substitute that into the length of AB. We have a final calculation for the length AD. We will again solve this indirectly. We know that ADC takes 40 minutes. So taking ADC as the distance, we get ADC is equal to 40 multiplied by S. Then AD is equal to ADC minus DC. We know that DC is equal to 10, so AD is equal to 40S minus 10. So that's the length of AD. We are now ready to solve the problem. There are many ways to solve this problem. In this video, I will present two different methods. Method one, this is either a geometric construction or using coordinate geometry, depending on your perspective. This is not the fastest way to solve the problem, but it's the most accessible because it only requires high school geometry. So to get started, construct the vertical and horizontal lengths going from the point A to the point D. Do the same thing from the point A to the point B. We have now constructed a rectangle encapsulating the diagram. Suppose the horizontal distance 
from A to D is equal to X. We can then take the entire horizontal length going from A to C, and we can see its value is equal to X plus 10. Suppose the vertical distance from B to A is equal to Y. We can then calculate the entire vertical distance from the point A to the point C, and this will be equal to Y plus 10. So all of these lengths will be in miles, so let me just drop these labels. We now have a diagram with many right triangles, so let's analyze these. Let's start out with this right triangle at the lower left. Since we have a right triangle, we have x squared plus the square of y plus 10 is equal to the square of 40s minus 10. Let's now consider half of this rectangle. In this right triangle, we have the square of x plus 10 plus the square of y plus 10 is equal to the square of 30s. Finally, consider the right triangle in the upper right. In this right triangle, we have the square of x plus 10 plus y squared is equal to the square of 35s minus 10. We have now reduced the question to solving a system of three equations in three variables. So all that remains is to solve this system of equations. Let's focus on these three equations. As is a usual trick, let's subtract one equation from the other. So let's subtract the second equation from the first to eliminate the term the square of y plus 10. We end up with the following equation. We can solve this equation for x in terms of s. x is equal to negative 35s squared plus 40s minus 10. Let's now do the same thing by subtracting the third equation from the second. This will eliminate the term the square of x plus 10. So we end up with the following equation, which we can solve for y in terms of s. We solve that y is equal to minus 65s squared over 4 plus 35s minus 10. We now have one equation where x is in terms of s, we have another where y is solved in terms of s, and now we can substitute both of these back into one of the equations. So let's just take this first equation. So if we focus on these three equations, we can substitute for x and y, and we'll have an equation that's just in the variable s. So it's going to be a bit tedious, but let's go ahead and do this substitution. Then I will spare you all the calculations, but we end up with the following equation. We can factor out 25s squared. So now we have an equation that's readily solvable. So let's look at this equation. We have the product of two terms is equal to zero, so at least one of them is equal to zero. One possibility is that 25s squared is equal to zero, but this would mean that s is equal to zero. Now that would mean the car has no speed and it doesn't move, so we're going to eliminate this possibility. So we're left with the other possibility that the quadratic equation is equal to zero. We use the quadratic formula and we end up with two possibilities. S is either equal to 1260 minus eight root 6461 all over 953, or S is equal to 1260 plus eight root 6461 all over 953. The approximate values will be S is approximately 0 0.64738 and S is approximately 1.9969. So let's go back to our diagram and solve for X and Y. We're not quite done yet. So we know what the values of S are and we have X is equal to the following equation in terms of S and Y is also equal to this. So if we substitute in these values, we'll get values for X and Y. So notice when S is approximately 1.9969, x and y are negative. So this will slightly change what the diagram would have to be. We're also not done because we've solved for s in terms of miles per minute. We wanted miles per hour. So we need to do one more conversion. 
miles per hour will be equal to miles per minute multiplied by 60 minutes per hour. So we take these values and multiply by 60 to get that S is approximately 38.8 miles per hour, or S is approximately 119.8 miles per hour. So let's consider these values. For the value on the left, we're going to end up with the diagram that was illustrated. The values on the right would correspond to a slightly different diagram, which is not what was illustrated originally, but mathematically it would still have the same features that were told at the beginning. So you could say that 38.8 miles per hour would be the answer. This is a reasonable speed level, and it also corresponds to the diagram that makes sense. But you could mathematically argue for 119.8 miles per hour, it has the features that were described in the problem, and although the diagram is a little bit different, it would satisfy these equations. So these are the answers. So now that we've gone through the long way, let me show you a slightly faster way to solve the problem. We will start out with this diagram. Method two will involve trigonometry. In particular, we will use the law of cosines, also known as the theorem of Al-Kashi. So this is a generalization of the right triangle theorem. So let's say we have a triangle with sides A, B, and C, and we have angles alpha, beta, and gamma, where gamma is opposite side C. We can solve that C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared minus 2AB cosine of gamma. So let's split apart this 90 degree right angle at C and say that BCA is equal to gamma. So then ACD is equal to 90 degrees minus gamma. Let's take a look at the triangle ADC. We will take the angle 90 degrees minus gamma and the side opposite that is 40S minus 10. So by the law of cosines, we have the square of 40S minus 10 is equal to 10 squared plus the square of 30s minus 2 times 10 times 30s times the cosine of the angle, which is 90 degrees minus gamma. So that's one equation. Let's do the same thing for triangle ABC, and we will do it for the side AB. So we have the square of 35s minus 10 is equal to 10 squared plus the square of 30s minus 2 times 10 times 30s times cosine of gamma. Recall that in method one, we reduce the problem to a system of three equations in three variables. Using the law of cosines, we've reduced the problem to a system of two equations in two variables. Furthermore, we won't even have to solve for the variable gamma. So let's focus on these two equations. Let's take a look at the first equation. Let's solve this equation for cosine of the angle. So we'll move all the terms to the right and then divide by 2 multiplied by 10 multiplied by 30s. This all magically simplifies to be equal to 8 minus 7s all over 6. Furthermore, we have cosine of 90 degrees minus gamma, but we know that this is always equal to sine of gamma. So sine of gamma is equal to 8 minus 7s all over 6. Let's do the same sort of calculation for the other equation. So we've reduced the first equation to sine of gamma is equal to 8 minus 7s over 6. So let's solve for cosine of gamma in this equation. We will solve for cosine of gamma, and this will all magically simplify so that cosine of gamma is equal to 28 minus 13s all over 24. So we solve for sine of gamma, and we solve for cosine of gamma. So let's focus on these two equations. How do we proceed from here? We use the famous formula that sine squared gamma plus cosine squared gamma is equal to one. This is one of the most important equations in trigonometry. And by the way, this doesn't depend on Pythagoras. This was a big news story. If you haven't seen it, I recommend you check out this video. Two 18 year olds just proved that it can purely be derived from trigonometric methods. It doesn't have to do with the so-called Pythagorean theorem. Definitely check out that video. Anyway, getting back to the point, we have sine squared gamma plus cosine squared gamma is equal to one. We will substitute for sine gamma and cosine of gamma. 
We then just need to simplify this equation and solve for s. So if we expand out, we end up with the following equation, and we're now just going to simplify from here. So let's multiply both sides of the equation by 576, and then we will group like terms. We end up with the quadratic equation 953s squared minus 2520s plus 1232 is equal to zero. This is the same quadratic equation we had in method one, so we already have these solutions and these approximate values. We just need to convert this from miles per minute to miles per hour. So we go ahead and take these values and we multiply them by the 60 minutes that there are in an hour. We're going to end up that S is approximately 38.8 miles per hour or 119.8 miles per hour. And if we solve the entire triangles, we would end up that the diagrams are these two different diagrams. So arguably, 38.8 miles per hour is the most reasonable answer. It's a reasonable speed, and it corresponds to the diagram that was illustrated. But you could say mathematically that the speed of the car could be 119.8 miles per hour. The diagram would satisfy all of the initial conditions with a slightly different look. So it's up to you to say whether there's one answer or two answers, but I think both are interesting mathematically. What an interesting puzzle. Thanks for making us one of the best communities on YouTube. See you next episode of Mind Your Decisions, where we solve the world's problems, one video at a time.